Okay, today is the 11th of September, and we are on the third night of this Majjhima Nikaya talks. And we come to Sutta number five, Anangana Sutta, without blemishes. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anatha Pindika's Park. There, the verbal Sariputta addressed the monks thus, Friends, monks, friend, they replied. The verbal Sariputta said, Friends, there are these four kinds of persons found existing in the world. What for? Here some person with a blemish does not understand it as it really is thus. I have a blemish in myself. A blemish is a fault. Huh? Here some person with a blemish understands it as it actually is thus. I have a blemish in myself. Here some person with no blemish does not understand it as it actually is thus. I have no blemish in myself. Here some person with no blemish understands as it actually is thus. I have no blemish in myself. Here in the person with a blemish who does not understand it as it actually is thus. I have a blemish in myself. It's called the inferior of these two persons with a blemish. Here in the person with a blemish who understands it as it actually is thus. I have a blemish in myself. It's called the superior of these two persons with a blemish. Here in the person with no blemish who does not understand it as it actually is thus. I have no blemish. It's called the inferior of these two persons with no blemish. Here in the person with no blemish who understands it as it actually is thus. I have no blemish. It's called the superior of these two persons with no blemish. And this was said, the Venerable Maha Moglana asked the Venerable Sariputta, Friend Sariputta, what is the cause and reason why of these two persons with a blemish, one is called the inferior man and one is called the superior man? What is the cause and reason why of these two persons with no blemish, one is called the inferior person and one is called the superior person? Venerable Sariputta said, Herein, friend, when a person with a blemish does not understand it as it actually is thus, I have a blemish in myself. It can be expected that he will not arouse zeal, make effort or in instigate energy to abandon that blemish and that he will die with lust, hatred and delusion, with a blemish, with mind defile. Suppose a bronze dish were brought from a shop or a smithy covered with dirt and stains. And the owners neither used it nor had it cleaned, but put it away in a dusty corner. Would the bronze dish thus get more defiled and stained later on? Yes, friend. So too, friend, when a person with a blemish does not understand it as it actually is, is thus. I have a blemish in myself. It can be expected that he will die with mind defiled. When a person with a blemish understands it as it actually is, is thus. I have a blemish in myself. It can be expected that he will arouse zeal, make effort and instigate energy to abandon that blemish and that he will die without lust, hatred and delusion, without a blemish with mind undefiled. Suppose a bronze dish were brought from a shop or a smithy covered with dirt and stains, and the owners had it cleaned and did not put it in a dusty corner. Would the bronze dish thus get cleaner and brighter later on? Yes, friend. So too, friend, when a person with a blemish understands it as it actually is thus, I have a blemish in myself. It can be expected that he will die with mind undefiled. Herein, when a person with no blemish does not understand it as it actually is thus, I have no blemish in, my, in myself. It can be expected that he will give attention to the sign of the beautiful, that by his doing so, lust will infect his mind, and that he will die with lust, hatred and delusion, with a blemish, with mind defiled. Suppose a bronze dish were brought from a shop or smithy, clean and bright, and the owners neither used it nor had it cleaned and put in it, but put it in a dusty corner. Would the bronze dish thus get more defiled and more stained later on? Yes, friend. So too, friend, when a person with no blemish does not understand it as it actually is thus, I have no blemish in myself. It can be expected that he will die with mind defiled. Herein, when a person with no blemish, blemish understands it as it actually is thus, I have no blemish in, in myself. It can be expected that he will not give attention to the sign of the beautiful, that by his not doing so, lust will not infect his mind, and that he will die without lust, hatred and delusion, without blemish, with mind undefiled. 
Suppose a bronze dish were brought from a shop or smithy, clean and bright, and the owners used it and had it cleaned and did not put it in a dusty corner. Would the bronze dish thus get cleaner and brighter later on? Yes, friend. So too, friend, when a person with no blemish understands it as it actually is thus, I have no blemish in myself. It can be expected that he will die with mine undefiled. This is the cause and reason why of these two persons with a blemish, one is called the inferior man and one is called the superior man. This is the cause and reason why of these two persons with no blemish, one is called the inferior man and one is called the superior man. Let's stop here for a moment. Nah. So here Venerable Sariputta explains nah, that these two persons nah, with a fault, nah, one knows that he has a fault, the other one does not know that he has a fault, nah, a mouping, nah, a weakness. Nah. Nah. So the one who does not know, nah, then nah, he will not make an effort nah, to improve, nah, to get rid of that blemish, nah, that fault. Nah. Whereas the other person, uh, he knows uh, that he has a blemish, uh, he has a fault. Uh, then it can be expected uh, that he will put forth energy uh, to get rid of that fault uh, and improve. Uh, uh. And then for the, the other two persons uh, with no blemish, uh, the one who does not know that he has no blemish, uh, does not understand. Uh, so at that time he may have no blemish, but because he doesn't know, uh, so he doesn't know how to preserve his uh, purity, and uh, does not does not know how to preserve his uh, faultlessness. Uh, then he will get himself uh, uh, dirty uh, by taking uh, delight in beautiful things, uh, enjoyable things, and all that. Uh, then uh, greed, hatred, and delusion, uh, or lust, hatred, and delusion, uh, will. Uh, affect his mind uh, so that he will later on uh, he will have blemishes uh. whereas the other person with no blemish uh, he knows uh, that he's pure uh, then he makes effort uh, to preserve that purity uh, uh, so that's why he's superior Venerable uh. Sarakuta said uh, blemish, blemish is said friend but what is this word blemish a term for? blemish friend is a term for the spheres of evil unwholesome wishes it means unwholesome desires. It is possible that a monk here might wish, if I commit an offense, let the monks not know that I have committed an offense. And it is possible that the monks come to know that monk has committed an offense. So he is angry and bitter thus. The monks know I have committed an offense. The anger and bitterness are both a blemish. It is possible that a monk here might wish, I have committed an offense. The monks should admonish me in private, not in the midst of the Sangha. And it is possible that the monks admonish that monk in the midst of the Sangha, not in private. So he is angry and bitter thus. The monks admonish me in the midst of the Sangha, not in private. The anger and bitterness are both a blemish. It is possible that a monk here might wish, I have committed an offense. A person who is my equal should admonish me not a person who is not my equal. And it is possible that a person not his equal admonishes him, not a person his equal. So he is angry and bitter thus. A person not my equal admonishes me, not a person my equal. The anger and bitterness are both a blemish. It is possible that a monk here might wish, or that the teacher might teach the Dhamma to the monks by asking a series of questions of me, not of some other monk. And it is possible that the teacher teaches the Dhamma to the monks by asking a series of questions to some other monk, not of that monk. So he is angry and bitter thus. The teacher teaches the Dhamma to the monks by asking a series of questions of some other monk, not of me. The anger and bitterness are both a blemish. It is possible that a monk here might wish, or oh, that the monks might enter the village for arms, putting me in the forefront, not some other monk. And it is possible that the monks enter the village for arms, putting some other monk in the forefront, not that monk. So he is angry and bitter thus. The monks enter the village for arms, putting some other monk in front, in the forefront, not me. The anger and bitterness are both a blemish. It is possible that the monk here might wish, or oh, that I might get the best seat, the best water, the best arms food in the refectory, the dining hall not some other monk, and it is possible that some other monk gets the best seat. 
It is possible that a monk here might wish, or that I might give the blessing in the refectory after the meal, not some other monk. And it is possible that some other monk gives the blessing. It is possible that a monk here might wish, or that I might teach the Dhamma to the monks, that I might teach the Dhamma to the nuns. Men lay followers, women lay followers, visiting the monastery, so not some other monk. And it is possible that some other monk teaches the Dhamma. It is possible that a monk here might wish, or that the monks, the nuns, the men lay followers, the women lay followers, might honor, respect, revere and venerate me, not some other monk. And it is possible that they honor some other monk. It is possible that a monk here might wish, or that I might be the one to get a superior robe, superior arms food, superior resting place, superior medicinal requisites, not some other monk. And it is possible that some other monk is the one to get superior medicinal requisites, not that monk. So he is angry and bitter thus. Another monk is the one to get superior medicinal requisites, not me. The anger and the bitterness are both a blemish. Blemish friend is a term for the spheres of these evil and wholesome wishes. If the spheres of these evil and wholesome wishes are seen and heard to be unabandoned in any monk, then for all he may be a forest dweller, a frequenter of remote abodes, an arms food eater, a house to house seeker, a refuse rag wearer, a wearer of rough robes. Still his fellows in the holy life do not honor, respect, revere and venerate him. Why is that? Because the spheres of these evil, evil and wholesome wishes are seen and heard to be unabandoned in that venerable one. Suppose a metal bowl were brought from a shop or a smithy, clean and bright, and the owners put the carcass of a snake or a dog or a human being in it, and covering it with another bowl went to the market. The people seeing it said, What is that you are carrying about like a treasure? Then raising the lid and uncovering it, they looked in, and as soon as they saw, they were inspired with such loathing, repugnance, and disgust that even those who were hungry would not want to eat, not to speak of those who were full. So too, if the spheres of these evil and wholesome wishes are seen and heard to be unabandoned in any monk, then for all he may be a forest dweller, etc. Then they... These fellows in the holy life do not honor, respect, revere, and venerate him. Huh? If the spheres of these evil and wholesome wishes are seen and heard to be abandoned in any monk, then for all he may be a village dweller, an acceptor of invitations, a wearer of robes given him by householders. Yet his fellows in the holy life honor, respect, revere, and venerate him. Why is that? Because the spheres of these evil and wholesome wishes are seen and heard to be abandoned in that venerable one. Suppose a metal bowl were brought from a shop, or a smithy, clean and bright, and the owners put clean boiled rice and various soups and sauces into it, and covering it with another bowl, went back to the marketplace. Then people seeing it said, What is that you are carrying about like a treasure? Then raising the lid and uncovering it, they looked in, and as soon as they saw, they were inspired with such liking, appetite and relish, that even those who were full would want to eat not to speak of those who were hungry. So too, friend, if the spheres of these evil and wholesome wishes are seen and heard to be abandoned in any monk, then for all he may be a, a village dweller, etc. His fellows in the holy land uh, would still honor, respect, revere and venerate him. And this was said, the Venerable Maha Moggallana said to the Venerable Sariputta, A simile occurs to me, friend Sariputta, stated friend Moggallana, on one occasion, friend, I was living at the hill fort at Rajagaha. Then when it was morning, I dressed, and taking my bowl and outer robe, I went into Rajagaha for arms. Now on that occasion, Samiti, the Cartwright's son, was planing a fellow, and the Ajivaka, Pandu Putta, son of a former Cartwright, was standing by. Then this thought occurred, then this thought arose in the Ajivaka, Pandu Putta's mind. Oh, that this Samiti, the Cartwright's son, might plane this bend, this twist, this fault out of the fellow, so that it would be without bends, twists, or fault, and come to consist purely of hard wood. And just as this thought came to pass in his mind, so did Samiti, the Cartwright's son, plane that bend, that twist, that fault out of the fellow. 
Then the Ajivaka Pandaputta, son of a former cutright, was glad, and he voiced his gladness thus. He pleased just as if he knew my heart with his heart. So too, friend, there are persons who are faithless and have gone forth from the home life into homelessness. Now, not out of faith, but seeking a livelihood, who are fraudulent, deceitful, treacherous, haughty, hollow, personally vain, rough tongue, loose spoken, unguarded in their sense faculties, immoderate in eating, undevoted to wakefulness, unconcerned with reclusion, not greatly respectful of training, luxurious, careless, leaders in backsliding, neglectful of seclusion, lazy, wanting in energy, unmindful, not fully aware, unconcentrated, with straying minds, devoid of wisdom, drivelers. The verbal Sariputta, with his discourse on the Dhamma, plays out their faults, just as if he knew my heart with his heart. But there are clansmen who have gone forth out of faith from the home life into homelessness, who are not fraudulent, deceitful, treacherous, haughty, hollow, personally vain, rough-tongued or loose-spoken, who are guarded in their sense faculties, moderate in eating, devoted to wakefulness, concerned with reclusion, greatly respectful of training, not luxurious or careless, who are keen to avoid backsliding, leaders in seclusion, energetic, resolute, established in mindfulness, fully aware, concentrated, with unified minds, possessing wisdom, not drivelers. These, on hearing the Venerable Sariputta's discourse on the Dhamma, drink it in and eat it as it were, by word and thought. Good indeed is it is that he makes his fellows in the holy life emerge from the unwholesome and establish themselves in the wholesome, just as a woman or a man, young, youthful, fawn of adornments, with head bathed, having received a garland of lotuses, jasmine or roses, we take it would take it with both hands and place it on the head. So too there are clansmen who have gone forth out of faith, not drivelers. These on hearing the Venerable Sariputta's discourse on the Dhamma, drink it in and eat it as it were by word and thought. Good indeed it is that he makes his fellows in the holy life emerge from the unwholesome and establish themselves in the wholesome. Thus it was that these two great beings rejoice in each other's good words. It's the end of the Sutta. So, so the verbal Sariputta says uh, that uh, blemish uh, is a term for evil, unwholesome wishes or desires, la, and uh, well, those faults, la. and then if these uh, faults or blemishes uh, are not abandoned in a monk, uh, he still has a lot of faults, uh, then he may be a very ascetic monk, uh, monk who stays in the deep forest, and all that, nah. but still, nah, the other monks would not respect him nah, because they can see nah, his uh, all his faults. Nah. On the other hand, nah, uh, if you have a monk nah, who has abandoned these uh, blemishes, nah, these faults in him, nah, then nah, even if he doesn't stay in the forest nah, and doesn't uh, practice ascetic practices, nah, that the other monks nah, respect him. Nah. Why? Because nah, they see nah, that he has got rid nah, of a lot of the faults. Nah. Then uh, it's a description here uh, on uh, paragraph 32, page 113. Uh, there's a paragraph 32, the first part is about fraud monks. La, and at the bottom is the true monks. La. Uh, in some other suttas, uh, uh, the Buddha mentions uh, these are the fraud monks. Uh, the characteristics of a fraud monk uh, is one who is, does not have faith la, in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. He goes out. He goes forth from the home life into homelessness uh, just to seek uh, livelihood, uh, cari makan. Uh, and then they are deceitful, uh, they are haughty, uh, vain, coarse in their speech, uh, unguarded in their sense faculties, uh, immoderate in eating, uh, uh, undevoted to wakefulness. Uh, hmm? Undevoted to wakefulness means sleep a lot, uh, unconcerned with reclusive, uh, with striving. Uh, uh, not respectful of the training, uh, luxurious, uh, careless, uh, neglectful of seclusion, uh, lazy, uh, uh, not concentrated, uh, straying minds, uh, no wisdom. Uh. So, towards the last part, uh, Venerable Moglana praised the Venerable Sariputta for giving discourses like this uh, so that the monks uh, 
and improve la, and emerge from the unwholesome la, and establish themselves in the wholesome. Uh. So now all the suttas are spoken by the Buddha. Some of them are, are by uh, senior monks like the Venerable Sarikta. Now we come to the next sutta, number six, uh, Akankeya Sutta. If a monk should wish, thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anatta Pindika's Spa. There he addressed the monks thus, Monks, Venerable Sir, they replied. The Blessed One said, Monks, dwell possessed of virtue. There is more moral conduct. Eh? Possessed of the Patimoka, restrained with the restraint of the Patimoka, perfect in conduct and resort, and seeing fear in the slightest form, trained by undertaking the training precepts. Stop here for a moment. Eh? This Patimoka, I think in Mandarin is Poloti Mucha, and is a set of uh, precepts lah, for the monks lah. in the Theravada tradition now we have 227 precepts and in the Mahayana tradition they have 250 precepts for the monks. The precepts are almost uh, identical only there's a slight uh, variation I mean some they put in front they should be at the back and all that and also they've added a section on concerning the stupa. They should, uh, when you are near the stupa, you should be more respectful. Uh, you should not urinate in the direction of the stupa. You should not shit around the stupa. And uh, you should not carry a corpse under the stupa. The stupa in those days probably uh, was like a elevated structure uh, with the uh, relics at the top. Uh, and at the bottom, people could pass across, uh, could walk across. Uh, uh. So that's why they say you uh, should not supposed to carry a corpse under the stupa and all that. Uh. Mm. So the Mahayana monks, uh, they have even uh, 23 precepts more than the Theravada. And the precepts are almost identical. But unfortunately nowadays, uh, they don't put much emphasis uh, on the uh, precepts. Uh. So this Patimoka is the set of uh, the 200 over precepts. Uh. Uh, this is the Patimoka. And this is recited every two weeks uh, on the Uposata day. Um, the lunar calendar, it's the 15th and the 30th day of the lunar calendar. La. If you don't have 30 days, then it's 29 days. La. And the Buddha continued, Monks, if a monk should wish, may I be dear and agreeable to my companions in the holy life, respected and esteemed by them. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, not neglect meditation, be possessed of insight and dwell in empty huts. If a monk should wish, may, be, may I be one to obtain robes, arms, food, resting place and medicinal requisites. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, not neglect meditation, be possessed of insight and dwell in empty huts. Similarly, if a monk should wish, may the services of those whose robes, arms, food, resting place and medicinal requisites are used, bring them great fruit and benefit. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, when my kinsmen and relatives who have passed away and died remember me with confidence in their minds, may that bring them great fruit and great benefit. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I become a conqueror of discontent and delight, and may discontent and delight not conquer me. May I abide transcending discontent and delight whenever they arise. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I become a conqueror of fear and dread, and may fear and dread not conquer me. May I abide transcending fear and dread whenever they arise. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I become one to obtain at will, without trouble or difficulty, the four jhanas that constitute the higher mind, and provide a pleasant abiding here and now. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I contact with the body and abide in those liberations that are peaceful and immaterial, transcending forms. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I with the destruction of three fetters become a stream enterer, no longer subject to perdition. 
bound for deliverance, headed, headed for enlightenment, let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I, with the destruction of three fetters and the attenuation of lust, hatred and delusion, become a once returner, Sakadagamin, returning once to this world to make an end of suffering. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I, with the destruction of the five lower fetters, become due to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes, and there attain final Nibbana, without ever returning from that world. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I wield the various kinds of supernormal power. Having been one, may I become many. Having been many, may I become one. May I appear and vanish. May I go unhindered through a wall, through an enclosure, through a mountain as though through space. May I dive in and out of the earth as though it were water. May I walk on water without sinking as though it were earth. Seated cross-legged, may I travel in space like a bird. With my hand, may I touch and stroke the moon and sun, so powerful and mighty. May I wield must bodily mastery, even as far as the Brahma world. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I with the divine ear element, which is purified and surpasses the human, hear both kinds of sounds, the divine and the human, those that are far as well as near. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I understand the minds of other beings, of other persons, having encompassed them with my own mind. May I understand the mind affected by lust, as affected by lust, and the mind unaffected by lust, as unaffected by lust. May I understand the mind affected by hatred, as affected by hatred, and a mind unaffected by hatred, as unaffected by hatred. May I understand a mind affected by delusion, as affected by delusion, and a mind unaffected by delusion, as unaffected by delusion. May I understand a contracted mind as contracted, and a distracted mind as distracted. May I understand an exalted mind as exalted, and an unexalted mind as unexalted. May I understand a surpassed mind as surpassed, and an unsurpassed mind as unsurpassed. May I understand a concentrated mind as concentrated, and an unconcentrated mind as unconcentrated. May I understand a liberated mind as liberated, and an unliberated mind as unliberated. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind etc. If a monk should wish, may I recollect my manifold past lives, that is one bird, two birds, three, a hundred, a thousand, etc. Thus with the aspects and the particulars, may I recollect my manifold past lives, let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I with the divine eye which is purified and surpasses the human, see beings passing away and reappearing, inferior and superior, fair and ugly, fortunate and unfortunate. May I understand how beings pass on according to their actions. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, etc. If a monk should wish, may I, by realizing for myself with direct knowledge, here and now, enter upon and abide in the deliverance by mind and the deliverance by wisdom that are tainless with the destruction of the taints or asavas. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, not neglect meditation, be possessed of insight, and dwell in empty huts. So it was with reference to this that it was said. Monks, dwell possessed of virtue, possessed of the Patimoka, restrained with the restraint of the Patimoka, perfect in conduct and resort, seeing fear in the slightest fault, trained by undertaking the training precepts. That is what the Blessed One said. The monks were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. So here you see the Buddha says, uh, dwell possessed of moral conduct, uh, possessed of the Patimoka, uh, uphold the precepts, uh, restrained with the restraint of the precepts. Uh, Perfect in conduct and resort. Conduct is our brotherly conduct. Huh? Resort is where we go to. Huh? We're not supposed to go to unsuitable resorts huh? uh, for a monk. Huh? Not supposed to go to a place where there are prostitutes. Not to go to a place where there's a widow alone. Uh, not to go to a, alone to the monk, to the nuns' quarters. Uh, 
etc. Not to go alone to where a, wo- a single woman is staying by herself and all that. So this resort. So the Buddha always says uh, to see fear in the slightest fall. And then uh, the Buddha says, uh, if the monk uh, should wish uh, to attain all these desirable things uh, that are mentioned here, uh, from the simple things like obtaining the requisites uh, up to psychic powers and uh, uh, liberation, uh, then uh, uh, he should fulfill the precepts, uh, be devoted to serenity of mind, uh, tranquility of mind, that means uh, samatha, practice samatha. Uh, you not neglect meditation. Meditation in the Buddha's teachings uh, always refers to the jhanas. Uh, be possessed of contemplation, uh, vipassana. Vipassana in the Buddha's teachings uh, refers to contemplation of the four objects, uh, body, feelings, mind and dhamma. Uh, and dwell in secluded places. Uh. So that's the way uh, the Buddha expects uh, monks to practice, uh, keep the precepts, practice Samatha meditation and then practice contemplation. That means uh, study the, the Dhamma and contemplate and dwell in secluded places like forest monasteries. Uh, then uh, if whatever a monk wishes to obtain, then he can obtain 